Nom, 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 nom. It's hot and dry. Yes! Okay. Come here. Come here. Wait enough. Sports. <laughs> Greetings all. I'm Tim Carey and I shall be your Taskmaster this evening. Welcome to Taskmaster 2023, a not so original series pitting five competitors against each other in a series of trying tasks. In doing so, they will grow not just as people, but as members of the global community. As the Taskmaster, I allocate points based on my earnest impressions of each competitor's performance, ingenuity, and heart. But my efforts pale in comparison to those of our noble contestants. Who will be the Taskmaster 23 champion? Will be the comfortably predictable Angela Nguyen. <laughs> the mild-mannered and reflective Greg Minolfi. Insatiably hyperactive, Jess Sattler. <laughs> bad boy's bad boy, Kyle Vacris. <laughs> or the coolly aloof, Michelle Domena. <laughs> and next to me is my selfless assistant. I don't care what they say about him. I think he's a great guy, Eric Fisher. <laughs> Well, Eric, here we find ourselves, one year older, one year wiser, another episode of unairable content to preside over. Please start out with our prize task, Eric. Sure thing, Tim. Each of our five competitors has been asked to bring in an object they've invented that best fulfills a societal need. Why don't you pull up Greg's for us? Gentlemen, may I say that when we're first born, we're given a towel. But today I have for you an entirely new invention, the multi-towel. The multi-towel can be used as a bag, a towel, a poncho, and more. Its combination of built-in features allows you to pack light, stay dry, and be prepared. This utility towel is made with high quality absorbent materials, reflective strip, imperial ruler, and built-in carabiner clip bottle opener. The multi-towel fills its own niche in your kit and can be combined with other tools to ensure you are ready for the adventures that await. <laughs> Greg, I think you're going somewhere with this. I really do. So Greg, did you make this yourself? I got my mom's sewing machine and wove things together. So yes, this is a handmade item. Well, they say you reap what you sow and Greg, I think you sewed something pretty fine here today. <laughs> I'd say if I had some stuff to carry around and I were also wet, this would be cool to have. Um, speaking of Jess, why don't we uh, put her task up as well? In a world where vegetables keep getting bigger and bigger, traditional knives don't seem to cut it. In gardens, you may notice the occasional fat cat squash stealing precious resources from the remaining vegetables. So in partnership with KitchenAid, we bring you the slice. It's a surefire way to get ahead of growing frustrations. The slice is offered in a variety of colors and sizes to fit the needs of the 99% of everyday home cooks. So you know we're weak for social political commentary on this show, so I appreciate the reference. I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> I will say though, Jess, that looks a lot like tape and cardboard. This is just a prototype. I mean, it's a conversation starter, if nothing else. And do you see yourself <laughs> using the slice? Uh, not me personally, but if any ladies are mad at their men, you know. <laughs> Angela, what best solves a societal need that you've invented? Well, I don't know about y'all, but are you tired of going on first dates and dreading the next? Well, introducing the Ghost Me Now. It'll help you create your own obituary so you can appear to be dead. Now, you don't have to worry about ghosting the first date because your obituary will let others know that you are no longer alive. Very on board with the premise. Wow. <laughs> but it hasn't knocked me dead yet. I need to see more about how it works. Yeah, so it's essentially a USB with all the resources you need to create your own obituary. So you can just stick it in there and 
really make it real. Mm -hmm. Angela, I think this has more uses than just breaking up with someone, too. I think you uh, could, this might actually expand yeah, into I mean, other you, realms. Yeah, you could expand into other realms. Yeah. Getting out of uh, Saturday afternoon commitments. Greg, we're filming this on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, what have you brought in that will help address a serious, dire societal need? Well, we've all been there. We're walking down the street, minding our own business, and then, like a deer in the headlights, somebody is coming up, they're headed straight for you. And you know that you're in the right because you are on the right side of the sidewalk. The other person is oblivious. Your oblivious foe looks you dead in the eye and doesn't budge, but no longer. With the right way belt, you can send a subtle message to your adversary that they are on the wrong side of the sidewalk. With its patented laser technology and slim profile, you can show him the right way every day. Now go slay the right way. Dang, I was, I didn't expect that much style. Clearly see both yeah. directions. Uh-huh. Do y'all look on the ground when you walk? Do you fall in holes a lot? <laughs> Kyle, what have you brought in for us today that'll help address a dire societal need? Thank you. Uh, so uh, artificial intelligence, it's all in the news these days, or it was a couple months ago when I came up with this idea at least. <laughs> so artificial intelligence is clearly the future, but will it be the Jetsons future or the Terminator? Oh. AI alignment is a critical issue of these days, so people have told me. Uh, but to solve the AI problem before it even becomes a threat is the best way forward, and for that, you're going to need an emergency safeguard that can be used as soon as a rogue AI emerges. Introducing the Botnet Uprising Combat Kit Emergency Tool. Uh, break the glass and apply liberally to the rogue AI. <laughs> if you can pull up ChatGPT on your computer, I can demonstrate if you want. <laughs> Guarantee. Stop working. <laughs> if the contents of the bucket don't work, I imagine the hammer could have come. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Well, what do you think, Tim? Honestly, at a loss for words. I've been seeing so many needs laid out before us. For the single point, <laughs> every point counts, Kyle. We celebrate every point. And that's why Jess should be very pleased to know that she got a single point for this task. It's a prototype. <laughs> for two points, we have Kyle. Yes, that was nice. Kyle, I love how relevant it was to the current news cycle. Yes, that's true. It was also a bucket. <laughs> um, third, third, I have nice Michelle. I think you directed yourself toward a handsome three points for yourself. Very reliable. The only downside, not as functional overseas. There are different directions and different norms. I'm happy where I am. Uh, yeah. For the four points, Angela. That your invention was eerily clever and a dead ringer of a good idea. Ooh. It's modern times. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. And for five points, Greg, yeah. you're getting the first full five points of the episode for your hand sewn multi use towel. The man sewed it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, folks. That is our first point spread of the day, but all this could change in a moment's notice. Eric, where does that put us now in terms of contestants ordering? Well, Tim, as you can see from this incredibly well-made graphic, Greg is in first place, with Angela in second, Michelle's right in the middle, and Kyle and Jess are bringing up the rear. I have thought long and hard, all of these devices were brought in to, in fact, solve problems. And on the Taskmaster set, we have no shortage of problems. Thus, I am reserving the right to bestow bonus points to anyone whose invention does become applicable in some meaningful way during the filming of today's episode. Uh -huh. This is for people to keep in mind. Do you have any billionaires coming on the show today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how yeah. that relates to produce at all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> With that being said, all of the inventions that we saw today were truly heralding in a new era. But when the new comes in, we must get rid of the old. I'm sure you have something to help scratch this itch for the deconstruction of old social constructs. Uh... I got them knocking a bunch of shit down. It's good enough for me. Hello there. Hey, Eric. How are you? Greetings, sir.
You ready for your next task? Absolutely. This looks like fun. Score the most points by knocking over red solo cups. You must only use the provided balls. You cannot leave the designated throwing area. You can throw as many times as you'd like. Red cups are worth one point each. Blue cups are worth negative 20 points each. Oh, that's tough. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. That's a lot of cups. <laughs> I did not see those until just now. It would appear we have a designated throwing area. So is this the area? Yeah, the yellow tape. It was designed mostly to prevent Greg from leaving off. These cups appear to be cups. I think they're more decorative, but uh, I just want to make sure... We're off to a good start. It doesn't specifically say those ones, so... <laughs> this is complicated. Yeah. And there's nothing about these green fellers. Then what are the green cups? Greens don't count. Correct. Everything you need to know is provided on the task. I thought you might say that. <laughs> Sports. I feel like I should just start chucking, but I wonder if there's another way to do this. Fuck it, let's start. Uh, the old pec muscles ain't, ain't what they used to be. All right. Yeah, and we'll just return the balls to you, actually. And this, uh, this here, this circly boy. Uh-huh. Just to confirm, no blue hidden cups in there? I mean, I don't see any blue hidden cups in here. Great. All right. Are you going for that one first, you think? No, absolutely not. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that was a good start. <laughs> oh, wow. Came here to make some wreckage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, feel confident, but I'm very frustrated. And I've been frustrated for months that I did not knock over the cups on the table. Is anyone here going to lose my three points? I might. <laughs> I'm just going to bet that right now. Yes. Knocking them over with your hands. Mm. It's good TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and folks. I'm the yeah. stage is now set. Let's see how it plays out. Eric. Right you are, Tim. That was a good start. Alrighty then, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Dangerously close. I'm pretty confident in my skills right now. Yay! Ooh, I gotta watch out for the recoil. Yeah, you know, I would have expected this to be a little more straightforward, but the whiffle. What happens if you step on the tape? Uh, well, I won't tell if you won't. I don't want to do that to myself. Do, 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 do. I don't understand what that means. All right, now to see if there's any prevailing wind. Right. <laughs> They're a little bouncy. Ooh, oh, oh! I'm out of balls. I need a, a refill. <laughs> Thanks, pal. How many points to hit the intern? <laughs> you know what? I think it's time that I take a little break. Oh, yeah? I feel great. Great. Ooh, Whoa. That's a risque. Have you thought about quitting while you're ahead? I have. I have. We don't want an Icarus situation. I'm just like, I'm convinced that I can get this stack without getting those guys. I don't think I was meant to hit that one. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a, okay. <laughs> I see how this is. <laughs> now I really want to get it. Ooh, almost missed that big blue. Oh, oh, I like that one. Nice, that's got a, offset at least one of these blues in here. I gotta like... <sighs> She's wobbling. <laughs> Cut that one a little close. Oh! oh. I'm still standing though. That's a trap, I'm not gonna do that one. There we go. That, that was a nice surprise. How do you feel about your performance so far? I uh, say it's a little below average. Yay! Okay. These balls suck. It's not me. <laughs> I want that rope. Fucking A. I can do it. Yes. 
You have 13 minutes and 38 seconds remaining. You, this will help you with your throwing, you think? It'll be a lasso. And to be clear, we return the balls to you. Yeah. Let's see how far this can go. Oh, not very far. Hey you almost had it that time. I think you lost your ball. I can get it for you. No, thank you. If you want, since that's what I do. Oh, we're, we're batting. <laughs> this might not be a good idea. <laughs> okay, so I should should do some math if it's worth it. It's minus 20 points. You think maybe you should have done math before you knocked over? No, maybe no, that was all just for getting it warmed up. <laughs> Fairly level field right now. I will say Jess right off the bat. It's absolutely zero points. If you hit the intern, he's getting college credit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you guys weren't even trying to hit the blue cups. Come on. <laughs> There's time. Uh, Angela, innovating. Yeah, you know, I tried. I tried. From the creator of the Ghost Me Now <laughs> comes the wiffle ball lasso. <laughs> All right, well, still, there are many cups standing. Eric, can you show us how the rest of this played out? Yes, sir. Did you do all these stacking with your feet too, or is that just... Oh! I mean, basically net zero, but still, I like to think... Oh, that blue one, right? It literally... Ah! Ah! That was pretty satisfying, admittedly. Oh! Well, now I know where it is. Is that one glued? You cannot leave. I just can't leave the designated throwing area, which, I mean, I think I've already lost. <laughs> oh, we're going to the uh, old, old method, huh? I'll play it your way. <laughs> I don't see blue. No! Oh, Jesus. Playing with fire a little, huh? Yeah, it's a little hot today. Ricochet! You satisfied with this? Last throws. You're still going. Everyone always says it's the last throws, and yet. Ah! Oh no! I should have stopped. Oh. Oh man, that is that is caught. That that's definitely net zero. Now I just have to play. <laughs> That one looks a little suspicious to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey! Down she goes. Oh. Down she goes. I want to just like discombobulate the rest of them since they're now fair game. Discombobulate. <laughs> Still feel like. Eric, can you pick up one of the cups and put it back? The one on that one. The one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'd like to feel a little better. <laughs> You're a suspicious man, Kyle. <laughs> I'm going to take a risky move. <gasps> well, that could have been worse. Could have been better. You I'm just at this point. I think... mean, I've got a negative 40, so I may as well just like. Right, I'm going to go all shit crazy over here. <laughs> Not bad. You gonna try and dig yourself out of this hole? Or are you going to uh, call it quits? <sighs> <laughs> What's that? I think you just lost a cup. What's okay. that? I don't know if I want to keep playing this game. <sighs> Thank you, Greg. Sure you don't want to quit while you're still ahead? I don't know if I'm ahead. If I'm ahead, please tell me. <laughs> I don't know that I have the hubris to keep going and risk knocking over the other blue cups that are still standing. I'm gonna call it. Thank you, Jess. Still going. You're not gonna quit while you still have a head? Uh, no. <laughs> Why would I do that? I feel like there's more than 20 cups in that stack, but one blue cup. Are you gonna lose by one point, you think? I might. All right, this might be my last toss. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, that one's not worth it. That's a trap, that's a trap. 
pyramid. Can I have one more ball? That one's been eluding you the whole time. Whoa! Alright, I think that's all the cups I want to knock over. I'm certainly not going to give up. 20 seconds. Except that was my last ball and I didn't really... Alright team, let's see what you can give me! Three seconds. No, that one was after the buzzer. Three points. I tried, my fellows. Yeah. I'd like to hope that somebody knocked over that front one and somebody knocked over that back one. I've never thrown a stick before. <laughs> <laughs> Last ball, baby. This is for Sparta. I'm done. <laughs> I am defeated. Good luck, Michelle. Thank you for playing today. Oh. <laughs> That's so sad. The pride before the fall, Angela. Yeah. You know, I just had to try. Hey, I will say, we celebrate innovation yeah. on this show. I love the innovation. When it works. <laughs> <laughs> Greg? Uh, Michelle? <laughs> hey, what, what can I say? What can I say? I, I blew it. Oh! Yes. Wow. This is for you. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Congratulations. You are so hard if, for it. If I had a fireplace in my uh, apartment, I would put this <laughs> right over it. Can we use this tonight for like a drinking game? Uh, yes. It's not like that clean. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite dirty. It's, it's, <laughs> but so, Greg, what do you have to say about the boundary lines? Do you think you should get the point? Um, I... No. <laughs> Put me at zero. Can we, can we go to zero? Yes, for, you for can, disqualification? Greg. Well, you can accept, Greg, your humility. What? Your humbleness. What? You can't reward this. Greg, I decided I will charitably give you the one point that you just yes. qualified yourself for. Yeah, like, negative 53 points. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, in terms of how points go, it's fairly self-explanatory. We have in last place, Greg, who has pulled himself up from DQ with a singular point. Uh, Michelle, heart-wrenching but yet inspiring second place. And Kyle, congratulations on the full five points. All right, Eric, so far we've seen a flurry of activity from our contestants. We're two challenges in. What is the current point total? Well, Tim, as you can see by our advanced infographic, it's a tight race at the top with four contestants either at six or seven points. You know, Eric, I'm a little concerned that our show is going to be a bad influence on impressionable youths. Could you give me something a little more family friendly? You got it, Tim. There it is. It's absolutely adorable. Write and illustrate the most wholesome children's story. You have 40 minutes to complete your story. Afterwards, you must read your story aloud on camera. The most wholesome, well-illustrated, and well-read story will win the five points. Your time starts now. Is there paper or anything I could use? Oh, the computer. Yeah, no one needs paper anymore. Wholesome is my middle name. Protagonist, setting, conflict, resolution. Okay. This is my idea board, but I'm not sure if I love my idea fully yet. Well, we put inspiration all around you. There's been a couple of pandas. Oh, a red panda. <laughs> okay, I'm sold. This is my protagonist, Riley, the red panda. Going for, uh... Puppies and kittens, I think. Why doesn't anyone have a drawing of a, of a raccoon and a puppy together? Obviously, I'm going to draw a bird. A bird that doesn't fit in until it feeds the the, ho the homeless. <laughs> Boy, noodles. <laughs> then I'm going to get a bowl of noodles. I'm going right into it, huh? Oh, yeah. It's going to write itself. I'm writing things down before I figured out the next line. It's the most wholesome word for poop. The illustrations <laughs> I can find. This is a camera down here as well. Okay, to watch me. Do my thing. Quite the uh, title page. Have you ever seen a boring children's book cover? 
Children judge books by their covers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's coming together. I mean, I just got to throw some paint on this and we'll be fine as could be. Oh, God. How many colors? What the? Blue. We got blue going on. Do you think that it needs to be the same puppy the whole way through? Do you have any scissors and tape? It's not perfect, but neither am I. Honestly, I'd give this to my nephew. Um, it's kind of wholesome because, I mean, it's a red panda. They're pretty cute. It's pretty well illustrated, I would say. Riley learns. There's nothing Riley learns. <laughs> that's the ish. There's no. <laughs> That's that's what it's missing. It's missing a, a less. All children's books have a wholesome like lesson. So, children's stories these days, I assume, are trying to push some agenda. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. I think they're like endangered. <laughs> it's one of those stories where they get you at the end. <laughs> I think this is looking pretty freaking good. Where's regular green? Um, what color is green? What color is green? Purple, purple, purple. <laughs> Boom, baby. Okay, all right. My pup. One of my puppies fell off. It was definitely on. Um, <laughs> it was definitely on. Thank you, Greg. Oh, all right. Oh, this was awesome. <laughs> so cute, creative, fun, and most of all, wholesome. I mean, look at the animals and all of their morals. Aww. Uh, what a refreshing change of pace. You know, you gave us 20 minutes to knock down some cups, but 10 minutes to <laughs> write and illustrate a whole book? Yeah, the video didn't mention the time crunch. That, yeah, was, that, that was a crunch, <laughs> yeah, a big crunch on that <laughs> one. It's like Jess said, the story writes itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of you guys did it very quickly and efficiently in her name, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> It hasn't been highlighted yet, but my story rhymes. Uh, I did spend the bulk of the time on the writing, and then the illustration was a notable weak point, but I felt great about my story. I think I should publish it when this event is done. Alright, well, let's see these stories in action, Eric. Right you are, Tim. Why, hello, boys and girls. <laughs> Today, I'm going to read you a story. Good afternoon, children. Today, we'll be reading a story of my own making. Today, we'll be reading A Day with Mr. Frog. It's called Perry. This is Riley the Red Panda. They go by all pronouns. Perry the puppy was wandering all alone. They needed more than ever for someone to throw them a bone. After his morning tea, Mr. Frog will hop, hop, hop to see his friends. Riley the Red Panda is hungry for newts, parentheses noodles, and has no money, sad. Well, I tell you what, after working hard all day gathering bugs and berries and worms, Thea came back to the nest to feed the chicks. Licorice knew that he, the two humans, and the something else would live in the yellow house happily forever after. He'd found, or they'd found something special. Someone threw him his bone. I changed bone. <laughs> <laughs> With the mystery solved, Mr. Frog could now dance, play, and sing with all of his favorite friends. The end. Thank you. Aww. Well, that was awfully fun, Eric. All of those stories about all those animals really sucked me in. I see no reason not to give five points to everyone. Do you have any objections? <laughs> Eric, what did you do? Well, that was awful. Animals really suck. I see no reason to give points. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spice this up, shall we? Here. Hello, Jess. Hello. You ready for the next one? I think so. All right, good luck. Hmm, this looks oddly familiar. I have no idea. Oh, but, but with a twist. Well, there's a panda or a raccoon but smoking a cigarette with a Coors Light and a roll of condoms. I think anyone would be unease. This is a party. I'm having a party. <laughs> Censor your children's story to make it seem as profane as possible. What does profane mean? Filthy, lewd, adult content. I thought I already did that. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Oh, this is perfect. 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 
I think this was perfect as it is. I don't know why we're edit why we're trying to mess with perfection. Can I does censoring ever include adding sounds? I'm really glad now that this is very poo centric. <laughs> already arguably unsuitable for children. So clearly this has been taken in a direction no one could have seen. Well, I've been waiting all filming for some uh, bullshit twist to happen. <laughs> so, that was a relief, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and with every task is a new opportunity. Eric, let's see how they did. Roll the clip. All right, Tim. Let's see all five. Today we'll be reading A Day with Mr. Frog. Mr. Frog lives in the woods by the river. He loves to start his morning with <laughs> After his morning Mr. Frog will hop, hop, hop to his friends. However, when Mr. Frog went to the tree, he didn't Mr. Owl. When Mr. Frog went to the tall grass, he didn't Wormy or Antony. And when he went to the carrot patch, Rabbit was missing. Mr. Frog felt confused and sad. But then he heard a noise in the distance. It was coming from behind the rose bushes. Surprise! All of Mr. Frog's friends were <laughs> With the mystery solved, Mr. Frog could now <laughs> and <laughs> with all of his favorite friends. The end. Why, hello, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you a story called Lick the Cat by yours truly. In a yellow house, there lived a black cat and two humans that licked him constantly. The humans always licked his poo box clean. <coughs> Until one day. The cat had had enough. He climbed up into the human's box, and the cat shocked him. <gasps> the end. Good afternoon, children. Today we'll be reading a story of my own making, entitled The Birdie Blues. There once lived a lonely bluebird by the name of Sia. Now, she was lonely, but never had anyone to sh oh. Until one day, she heard the cheeps of a nearby nest with new baby hatchlings. Well, I tell you what, Sia came back to the nest to f the chicks. Well, the parents flapped with joy as their baby chicks finally got a good um, nom, 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 nom. And from that day on, she was utterly exhausted. After all the birds in the forest, the end. Thank you. This is my story. It's called Pussy. Perry the Pussy was all alone. They needed more than ever for someone to bone. Perry was lonely, his breath and heart fast. A creature approached and said, Hi, my name's Zach. You look lonely. I've seen this before. Don't worry. You'll be cared for. I'm scared. I'm lonely. I'm hungry. I'm sore. And worse, I've never before. But Zack was ready. He hugged Perry close. Turns out, this is what Perry needed the most. After being all alone, he'd found something special. Someone threw him his bone. The end. Riley the Red Panda finds nudes in China by Andrew and Wayne. This is Riley the Red Panda. They go by all pronouns. She, he, they. Riley the Red Panda lives somewhere in China, which is known for yummy nudes. Riley the Red Panda is hungry for nudes and has no money. Sad. So, Riley the Red Panda meets Mama Red Panda somewhere in China and asks for nudes. <laughs> Riley the Red Panda. <laughs> God damn it. Mama gives Riley nudes coupon for. Supermarket nudes. Riley thanks Mama and journeys to get nudes. Riley the Red Panda travels from home to the supermarket 
and uses their coupon to acquire street nudes from the supermarket in China. Riley is thankful for Mama Red Panda and for nudes. Riley enjoys the nudes. P.S. Red pandas are endangered. Let's try to keep them safe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all of them, huh? <laughs> Angela, I couldn't help but notice that all of your dialogue was exactly the same <laughs> for both stories. Honestly, everyone did a great job, which puts me in a difficult position of having to rank you anyways. Well, there's an elephant in the room, Tim. We did give them the original prompt, then we pulled the rug out from under them and gave them that little plot twist. <laughs> I think you raise a great point, Eric. Just based off all the efforts all of these contestants put into every aspect of the task, I think points should be awarded holistically in terms of how they did for the first and second portions. So who's at the bottom of the barrel, Tim? For inconsistent pronouns and character designs, Michelle, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, they put you at the bottom of the ranking. It's and speaking of Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for two points, she did draw the story yourself, but I feel two points is where you stand because three points can only go to the person who did the task before we gave them the task. And that's Angela <laughs> for somehow seeing through the guys and creating a story that didn't even need censoring. <laughs> there were two beautifully illustrated stories with all sorts of animals doing all sorts of things to their friends. <laughs> uh, Greg, I have to give you four points for your beautiful story, your beautiful delivery. Jess, five points for your frog and his journeys <laughs> with his friends in the bushes. If you all did an excellent job, and should be, feel very proud of what you've done. Should I? Should we? Should we? Proud. So, Eric, how does that take us to points now? It almost couldn't be a tighter race. All five of our competitors are within two points of each other. Oh. Uh, in first place, shockingly, oh. it's Greg Minolfi <laughs> with ten points. We have a three-way tie for second with nine, and Michelle is still very much in it with eight. What's with the dashing fashion accessory, Eric? Well, I think it's quite stylish, Tim. Everyone will be wearing them one of these days. Well, I'll have to see it to believe it. Roll the clip. Greg. Oh. Yeah. Good hey, night. Eric. How we doing today? It's good to see you again. Right on. Right on. Are you ready for your next task? Oh yeah. All right. Have at it. Great. <laughs> Hope it's not somewhere obvious, so I don't look dumb. Whoa. Okay. I feel like your positioning makes me think that it's like, yeah, this could take a while, huh? Are you hiding it? It's almost like it's disappeared. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> As a juggler, I guess I have to respect magicians, but man, I'd rather take a clown any day. No one has to respect magicians. <laughs> Do something magical while wearing this top hat? Most magical thing wins. You have 30, 30 minutes? You have 30 minutes, your time starts now. Magic is my least favorite thing. With this top hat, so I have to use the top hat. Everything else is, is optional. I can't do card tricks. I know a card trick, not very good at it though. I figure I've got a one in 52 chance at least, huh? What's the line for? I made the lime disappear. Oh, I wasn't, uh, wasn't wearing the hat though. I would love though if somebody forgets to put it on. I will magically make this hat appear on my head. Wow, I look like an LA lesbian. I guess I could find a way to make myself disappear. Making things disappear might be like a really good thing, but I don't know how to make things disappear. Alright, I, I want to be appropriate for YouTube, so I won't, I won't run down. Um, the option that just crossed my mind. <laughs> Michelle, it seems for your first trick, your spatial awareness disappeared. 
<laughs> I found it eventually. <laughs> I just felt bad for my other competitors at the same time as I was feeling bad. I was like, all of us, like, this is just... Preemptive empathy. Preemptive empathy. When I walked into that room and Eric asked me, are you ready? And I said, oh, oh yeah. yeah. My heart said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw everything laid out on that table and... I'll put you ahead of Michelle, at least. <laughs> Let's see how the axe turned out. Eric, can you play the next clip? Yes, sir. Welcome, all. I'm, I'm the, the magical, magical Michelle. Michelle. Come with me as I take you on, on a journey through, through hell. hell. Together we will walk through a burning, burning inferno. inferno and watch as I become a human can of sterno. Michelle, what percentage of these tasks do you spend working on the rhymes? Uh, a significant portion, because I thought they'd be worth more points. But <laughs> I was wrong. Though the flame was small, it was certainly bright, and your task attempt was a true delight. Thank you. Eric, Thank why don't you roll the next clips? Let's see what other folks have done. First of all, Tim, that was quite sickening. But OK, I'll get on to my clicking. <laughs> Blink you into non-existence. Ooh. Magically inside my pocket right here. I'm gonna make this whole granola bar disappear. Yeah, I want you to sit. Oh, this is nice. This is comfy. Yeah. Welcome to uh, this magic show. You see magicians play with cards. Pick a card, any card, one card. They'll stack the deck against you. I'm gonna grab the card that you said. Wow. But not here. This whole time, you thought I didn't have a rabbit up my hat. <laughs> I'm not going to pull a rabbit as a hat. Ooh, yeah, we got it now, baby. This is 100% a magic eraser. I think the most magical thing you're going to get from me is watching me disappear. A magician never reveals his secrets. I need you to crawl over, 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 over there, over towards the bathroom. Be amazed as this... I am now realizing quite tall man vanishes into th vanishes. Oh my! Into thin air. Ah. 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 Where'd he go? Simply direct yourself to the nearest soap scum. Ew! What's all that grime? You say? If only I had a paper towel. Well, that's not gonna cut it. Simply take your magic eraser. Give it a little splish, and voila, oh, like wow. magic. I am going to completely clean your stove front. Come camera, you probably think he's just hiding under the table. That would be, that would be obvious. That would be, you know, you would, anyone would see that coming. But as you can now inspect for your own eyes, there is no, no man under the table at all. What you are going to see here tonight is me disappear, just one step at a time. <laughs> just oh. one, one step at a time. All right, I think we're done for tonight, guys. <laughs> no, of course not. I will have to bring the Magician's Assistant back from the ethereal realm. And that right there is the power of the magic eraser. Oh, you know, there's really, Descartes once said, to be, that was Hamlet, to be or not to be. Well, today, my friends, that famous soliloquy will finally be answered, to be. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I don't think I can do better than that. And it's these hard to reach places where the magic really comes through. How much time we got? Oh, 17 minutes. I am gonna clean your whole damn house. Oh my God. Wow, oh, that's nice. But I'll come back for you. Oh. <laughs> Surprise. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to use the full 30 minutes. <laughs> yes. I want to know for so 
long how you did that shit. <laughs> the magician never reveals their secrets. Kyle, what inspired you? Definitely making Eric crawl over over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think actually my trick would have been a lot better if I just did not make Eric reappear. <laughs> Greg, you made things disappear, but of a different sort. The magic eraser is purely an eraser until you put magic into it. You know, a, a paper towel is not magic. We know this. Yeah. Perhaps a multi towel has some magic behind it, but a paper towel could not fight the grime that we saw. Well, there you have it, folks. We've seen a man disappear, a contestant disappear, and some grime disappear. We have one competitor remaining. Yeah, I was like, where's mine? <laughs> you know what's quite magical? Coffee. Coffee? <laughs> I actually don't even know how to use this Nespresso, though. These look like tea bags. Tea's all right, but Nespresso's are like magical. Oh yeah. Abracadabra. Nice, that's magic right there. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, what the heck is this? That's all I got. And then, uh, yeah, you like sugar? Oh. All right, maybe I should make it a little sweeter here. Got some of this in here. Wow. Yes! That's it. That's it. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, would you like to describe to us what was magical about what you did? Well, I found out later, but that was actually Eric's first cup of coffee. So I think that's pretty cool. Oh, it's a magical moment in his life. Yep. Best cup I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so I think out of everyone, I created something instead of making things disappear. You know, the world needs more of that. I made myself disappear, but I made some smiles and laughs appear. And I think at the end of the day, that's all we can really hope for. Okay, well, I believe we've seen everyone's acts, but now it's our turn to make some scores appear. One point will go to Angela. Ultimately, the machine made the coffee. <laughs> for two points, Jess, for doing half of a trick. <laughs> Three points, Greg, sheer number of tricks. Four points, putting them near the high end of the ring. Kyle, it was the showmanship, the investment, the wonder, the awe of the art that you imbued left an impression. And for the full five points, by living by and creating the very sense of wonder that she holds within herself, Michelle Domena, thank you. Oh, well, it's still anyone's game, Tim. We've got a three-way tie with Greg, Kyle, and Michelle all in joint first place going into the final pre-film task with Jess and Angela having 11 and 10 points still very much in it. We've only got time for one more pre-recorded task, Eric, and I think we're missing a critical one. Yeah, a sneaky task we only gave to one person to humiliate them? Please, Eric, we don't humiliate here, we celebrate. Wait, Tim, you don't possibly mean a... That's right. The team task. Roll the clip. With special guest star. Hello again, Greg. Uh, greetings, Eric. How have we been? I'm doing great. You ready for your team task? Team task. Call this number and then read the task aloud. Do I, do I get to know who this number is? I should find out. I don't even have my phone on me. Soon enough. All right, let's see, let's see what we got here. What's poppin', Greg? What's poppin', Jess? Hello? Oh, hello there. Your teams will be competing in a six round game of telestrations. You will be separated. Player A will receive a prompt and must draw it. Player B will receive that drawing and must write out what they think it is. Player C will draw that prompt. The taskmaster will judge each round based on how closely the final drawings match the original prompt. You can't incorporate words in your drawings. Each competitor will have two rounds, each as player A, B, and C. Oh, we get to rotate. You have three minutes per round total. Time will start and stop when my assistant blows his whistle. 
Got all that? Got it. All right. Let's get ready to play. Good luck, team. Thank you very much. Eric. I was sensing some negativity from the. <laughs> <laughs> the unit will provide ample time for reflections. <laughs> Ryan Michelle. Straight to business. Good to see you. Mark set. Get it. Ah, all right. Oh my god. Okay. Dumping your bully in a vat of poop. I was hoping for like three words max. You got a whole story here. And I can't draw any words. No words. I think it's called writing. <laughs> right. And then we're going to have blue guy. Oh, that's violet. You're sure that's not a word, right? Ah, oh, man. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Now we're losing time. This is harsh. Okay, okay, okay. We, we talked about timing. Done. Okay, thank you, Michelle. 206. All right. Ow, I'm in pain. Ah, uh, uh -huh. what's the symbol for poop? Okay. This is so hard. How do I describe this action? Guy wheelbarrowing someone to dump them into poop. Uh, okay, done. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. What do we got here? Oh, Lord. A stick man. Mm hmm. It looks like he's uh, shouting some expletives uh -huh. at a child. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Jesus Christ. 18 <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> okay. Oh, I got a minute and a half. This will be easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> This one is so smaller than this one. It's like a baby. <laughs> You're like a baby into poop. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have all of your final prompts. Uh, team Blue. I'm surprised you got that in 18 seconds. That uh, good job, Angela. You really picked up the. I did the slack. that. Look at that. Oh shoot. <laughs> all right, and we got Team Orange. It's my job as Taskmaster to decide which of these two artistic renderings <laughs> looks the most like dumping your bull into a vat of poop. It's clear which of these is most reminiscent of the prompt, and it's Team Orange. Now, for Blue Team, <laughs> honestly, given 18 seconds, <laughs> I am remarkably proud and surprised at what Angel is able to pull off. So I will say for this prompt, I will give one point to Team Orange. However, I want to give one bonus point to Angela <laughs> for pulling it out oh, nice. of nothing. Nice. And the fact that she got the majority of the drawing down in 18 seconds of time. What's the last thing you all did that took 18 seconds? <laughs> I am rife with wow, self-moving and regret. <laughs> all right, shall we roll prompt number two? Two, when you are drawing. Engaging in a high-speed chase to avoid a cadre of machine gun-wielding terrorists. <laughs> this is very specific. A kindergartner could draw this, right? <laughs> and I don't know. Going based off Call of Duty stereotypes here. I've always said, Eric, you've got a strong gong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Team Orange. Gosh, damn, Orange. Not bad, not bad. Let's see what Team Blue got up to. <laughs> <laughs> One of these drawings is a drawing of a high-speed chase with cars. So Team Orange will get one point for this. Team Blue, zero. Going to prompt three. All right, we'll do this thing. Which one? <laughs> prompt three, having a friend who's weirdly older than you, but, but nobody questions it. <laughs> I'm not the best drawer. It's unfortunate, given the nature of the task. I know, it's like the worst. How do I draw a friend? Uh, Another bag. Uh, this time I can write word. Done. Thank you, Greg. Alright, done. Alright, we got team orange. There's some age differentials. I don't know. Oh. Friend. Oh. Discuss. Yeah. Okay, we got team blue. How oh, they're doing. <laughs> 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 Alright, the prompt specifically states that no one questions it. And yet, oh, one no! prompt is explicitly questioning. 
I understand that there are question marks here, but I think you're misreading the situation yeah. of the picture. Mm, yes. So Something. the stick figure is friends with the older person yes. here, and he's questioning where their Uber is <laughs> <laughs> to go to lunch. Team Orange's drawing looks more like family. Some or kidnapping. Thanksgiving <laughs> pilgrims. Hand holding is a universal sign of friendship, which I think is compelling. Yeah, but they're interlocking fingers. That's that's yeah, one yeah. step further than friendship. They're very close friends. Friendship. <laughs> friendship. Yeah. I'll have to give zero points for this problem. Welcome back, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. God, I hope it's something simple. Yes. Like you said, three words, right? I was hoping for like three words max. Cultural appropriation. <laughs> Cultural appropriation. Um, 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 okay. Th how I think I should forfeit this. This is not going to help me. Uh, he's not white enough. Come on, white man. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. This is, this is not working out. I, Okay, calling it. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. A guy who doesn't understand music. I think it's 27. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, uh, don't support cultural oh <laughs> wow. now i'm in a worse mood every time i come down here <laughs> how do i draw a white person i'll put them in like a kimono five seconds <laughs> it's my fault i feel like i'm the weak leak here <laughs> <laughs> Man, Ben definitely set me up for the while on my um, <laughs> Yeah, the first two are really strong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kyle, what, what happened here? I think even though he's not here with us in the studio right now, I think Ben Raymond may have established why he was the champion of Taskmaster 2022. Wait, wait, pause. The orange team had the champion of the previous Taskmaster? Isn't that like a leg up already? <laughs> well, don't you guys yeah. think that your team has the Taskmaster 2023 champion on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can take some moment for reflection. It's clear by looking at the prompt, looking at the drawings, this was a little difficult for everyone. I do think that I will give Team Blue a point. Yeah, I drew a oh. point in the running. Sorry. Well, that now puts us to our fifth. Naming your son after your ex-boyfriend instead of his father and- Your husband's totally okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Jess. I'm gonna run out of time, like, try and even get this concept across. <laughs> that look is everything. Okay, so there's two people. This one's thinking they're in love. Blue mustache. Baby. Man. Thinks everything is good. Lady thinks he is a blue square. <laughs> blue square. So they had to use that color for a reason. I really just peeved off, huh? I, I, I'm upset with myself. All right, well, this isn't very good, so I feel a little better. So we're going to do a lawn chair to start because that's how I think of everything is good. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> Ten seconds. Man thinks everything. Oh, uh, lady thinks he is a blue square. <laughs> <laughs> she don't want to draw the sun some more. <laughs> Thank you very much, Greg. Excellent. Look <laughs> how much I sucked at this challenge. Every this time, one... I fumbled it every time. And I'm pretty sure. I, I'm like... with you there. Spirits so faltered the later we went into the night. <laughs> Have you two orange? Look, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, look, look what I have produced for you. Okay, that is. Greg, how much time would you say you spent drawing the lawn chair? <laughs> how much time? I actually think that that's a very good rendition of the prompt that 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 you were given. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Man <laughs> thinks everything is good. Lady thinks he is a blue square. It still looks a little more like a rectangle to me. <laughs> what do both teams think about their prompts here? I can start by saying very strongly the husband is totally okay with it. Whatever's going on, <laughs> husband is totally okay with it. He That's, is relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of seems like, like I think one of them did really good. I, think, <laughs> I do think that Team Orange got the gist of the equation across. Team Orange takes a point for this prompt. There's no point for Team Blue on Gosh. this one. However, <gasps> what? there is one prompt left. Yes. Foolishly feel better this time. <laughs> All right. An explosion so powerful it sends you back in time and you find yourself trying to fend off your mother <laughs> who wants you to spelunk in her proverbial bat cave. I don't know what spelunk means. Thus forcing you to trick her into porking your father instead or you'll never be born. Jesus Christ. <laughs> pushing them back, pushing them back in time. So that's one section of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the mother. How the fuck do you even draw a mother? The classic right to left of causality here. Obviously, <laughs> everyone's gonna get that. Yeah, done. Thank you, Kyle. I think this is my best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Greg. Hey, what's up? I'll have sex if you buy me <laughs> groceries. <laughs> okay, thank you, Greg. What is this game? <laughs> Batman dancing around the clock while there's fire and a joystick? And a joystick. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. Team Blue. Discuss. I'm tired of beating around the bush. Yeah. The key element of this prompt is sex. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these two images elicits more sex? The wabos on the left or Batman on the right? She's even doing this. Oh! She's oh. Okay, I see. She yeah, wants you to eat her booty stuff. like groceries. I have to give it to Team Blue on this. <gasps> It comes down to what is the essence of art, metaphor, imagery, or as one had put it, wabos. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, folks. The ultimate tally. The final pre recorded task is a split three points to Team Orange, two points to Team Blue, a bonus point for the heart of hearts worn by Angela for overcoming overwhelming <laughs> adversity. I'm curious to see where they stand now after that rousing bout of art. Well, Tim, it is incredibly and might I say uncomfortably close. None of you will be able to coast through this party task because all of you are still in the running. As the excellent infographic will clearly show you, we have a two-way tie for first place. One point behind them, against all my expectations, is Greg with 15 points, but both Jess and Angela are within the five-point window that you can get in the final task with 13 points each. You couldn't script things this close. Well, Tim, there was that bonus point we discussed. You remember that time we were up all night writing tasks, and there was that movie we couldn't quite remember? We just knew it had, you know, machine gun chases and poop and cultural appropriation. And you said, you know what, Eric? If one of our contestants can tell me the name of that goddamn movie, we'll give the first person that says it one bonus point. I didn't use those exact <laughs> words, but yes, my mind was riddled with confusion, and I did hope that one of our contestants would help clear my memory, and I think one of them may have done just that. Roll the clip. Dumping your bully in a vat of poop. To avoid a cadre of machine gun wielding, having a friend who's weirdly older than you. Cultural appropriation. Naming your son after your ex-boyfriend. You find yourself trying to fend off your mother. <laughs> so you got a whole story here. These are very specific. Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. I'm satisfied. <laughs> I think an itch has been scratched in the far corners of my mind, and I now know what that film was. And so Michelle Domena has earned herself a gentle lead. It all comes down to the final task. That's right, Tim. But their final task is happening right here in the Taskmaster Studio. Please read the final task, Eric. But first, I think we need to change the ambience a bit. 
because we're doing the final task live. <laughs> Eric, would you please read out the final task? In turn, the five of you will be reading off this teleprompter. Don't smile or laugh. The most stone-faced and accurate performance reading off this teleprompter will win the five points. Good luck. Oh! <laughs> Hello, folks. I'm Angela. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah! <laughs> Can I get a hot damn? <laughs> Can I get a... <laughs> you look like a great crowd tonight. When I say holla, you say... <laughs> holla! Holla! When I say yicky, 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 you say... Yicky, yicky, yicky! Oh. Yicky, yicky, yicky! Oh. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Good night, DC. Oh. Well done. Jess, 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 Notorious Jester. Hi, champ. It's me, Mom. <laughs> Miss you, kiddo. I wish I could have seen you grow up. <laughs> Remember to eat your peas, brush your teeth. Never, ever, 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 ever order off the Little Dick's menu. <laughs> and now that the only sure thing in this life is the inevitability of death. <laughs> Live every day like it's your last. You never know when you could get smothered to the death in a silo of pancake powder. <laughs> or get shish kebobbed while sprinting with scissors. <laughs> or smushed by a juiced up Jim Bros barbells. <laughs> or milked by vengeful cows. <laughs> I've written a song about death. It's called Wilbur. <laughs> Please allow me to serenade you. <laughs> And I told you, I'm a hog. I have a pig nose and a tail. Even though I am your dad, you still slit my throat. Please take this to heart, my child. I've missed you since the day I ditched you in the Mickey D's ball pit. <laughs> Good day, mates. I'm Risky, Milf Hunter, Dingo, and today I've got a great new product for you. As you know, freckles are a hideous, sinful abomination. Well. Today, you can remove those hideous marks with the devil. With Milfco's new flesh-eating maggots in a tube, or flemmy tub for short. Simply apply a small dose of these microscopic flesh-eating buggers to your hideous visage and oof, enjoy your foul marks. Ouch. Vanish without a yowza hint of horrible blemishes that once marked you as lesser. <laughs> So what are you, oh my god, waiting for? Get your, uh, 
kidding me? <laughs> Flemmy tub today for the low, low price of. Burn! Oh my god, it burned! Sweet mother of fuck of Christ! 89.99 while supplies last. They're literally eating me from the inside out. Brought to you by Milko. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Hello, I'm Chad W. Cheddar reporting in. This just in, it's raining. <laughs> it is wet out here, folks. It is damp, dank, and dripping. It is the most moist I have ever been. I've got phlegmy mucus in my crevices. <coughs> Viscous fluid is secreting from the sky. But I endure a lesser cheddar, never weathered, wetter weather, never weathered, wetter weather, better. That's right, a lesser cheddar, never weathered, wetter weather, better. It's raining cats and dogs. The wind is picking up. I'm about to be Mary Poppins here in a second, folks. Oh no, it's come for me. I'm going over the rainbow. This is Chad H.W. Jetter signing out for the last time. <laughs> what is that, Greg? Well, it's just my handy bandy multi towel. Wow! Oh, it functions as a towel, actually, you might imagine. From the prize task. Yes. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. As you know, this week has been particularly tumultuous for me since this was the week I was trying to lose my virginity. And well, I don't want to spoil what happens next, but if you keep watching and if you like this video and if you subscribe, well then I think that you should just keep watching because there are some twists and some turns, and I tell ya. So it all started when my mom picked me up from the Dairy Queen, and my tummy was feeling a little queasy, cause I has a blizzard at that place, and the girl who gave it to me, she turned my whole milkshake upside down, right in front of me. And at first I thought, no way, please! Don't please do that to me, but the most craziest thing happened, and that thing that happened is that my milk didn't spatter right into the table, and that's a big plus for me, because it had happened well, you guys, my followers, so you know the deal, that if I had seen that had happened, I would have been in big trouble, and in any case, I was safe for the time being, until she then said, here is your blizzard, milady, and she tipped her big hat to me, and I said, excuse me, what, I am not your lady, and she said, ha, 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 that is what you think, you big, huge hottie, I bet you could do a black flip or some such thing like that, and I said, no way that you could tell that about me, do you maybe know my soul, and then you said, I'm sorry, I mean, she said, yes, she said, yes, baby, you have the muscles of an Adonis, like Rock the Wayne Johnson, and I said, yeah, I do, I go to do workouts, together we had six. <laughs> Taskmaster Tim has been meticulously taking notes on your performances. Your destiny is in his hands. He's going to come down here and he's going to tell everyone who the Taskmaster 2023 champion is! Honestly, y'all are remarkable. Like, we have play tested all these ourselves. Heavy struggle. Y'all did a great job. Because honestly, no one got one point oh. at all. Oh. Y'all did so well, and there was such close competition that there was no place deserving of a single point. Oh. The same thing happened with two points. Oh. There will be no two point position oh. with only <laughs> two stammers, one slightly more significant than the other. The three points goes to Angela Nguyen. Now, the four points goes to two people. Kyle Vakris, Jess Sattler, Woo! 
both get four points for this task. Yes, 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 yes. Likewise, the five points could not go to one person alone. There are two people. Well, you didn't just do it. You did it with flair. You did it with finesse. You did it with personal style. And you did it nearly without flaw. So the five points is split. Five points to Michelle Domena. Five points to Greg Minolfi. Now, before you all enter the room, there were some bonus points on the floor. There was one that goes back to the very first prize task. So Greg, you get a singular bonus point for using your invention. That being said, that being said, the points have changed, positions have changed, but there's only one definitive winner of Taskmaster 2023, and my assistant will now show the scores to you all in a dramatic reveal. All right, coming in fifth place, I want to hear the Fangela Club going crazy, it's Angela! She had never held a stick before, and now she is going to be an internet legend. One point ahead of Angela. One single point. But it's Jess Sattler! Now, with 20 points, Kyle Backrooms! Now, it comes down to Greg versus Michelle, and I'll tell you what, it's a one-point game. It's a one-point game in a game with bonus points, with plot twists, with points left on the board. The winner by one singular point, the Taskmaster 2023 champion is... Michelle Domena! Thank you all, thank you everyone, all the competitors putting their hearts on the field, all of you for showing out to celebrate their accomplishments and to celebrate this party with us. We couldn't do this without you, we appreciate you. Everyone have a great night. That's a wrap for Taskmaster 2023.